That's Beautiful. a good one. That's a good one. That's a good one right there, buddy. I got his head coming now. Oh, look at the sickles on that thing. That's awesome. Presented by Yellowfin with Captain Scott Walker and Captain Steve Roger. When we get there, I want to put one of those great big two-pound mullet on that rod with the 130 fluorocarbon. That'll be Steve. We'll, we'll put a herring on the uh, on the 100 pounder. Okay. All right, and then we'll just just well, I'll get up right next to the boat, and you'll feed them back behind. I'm just going to kind of let it slowly drift back, and I'll look at the machine. If we don't get bit, but we're marking fish, and we'll pull back up, and we'll we'll chum, you know, put the live baits out, and then just drift back as we chum. You can see these boats just kind of sitting still right up here. Yep. You get up behind it, and you get, you know, once you get them on it, a lot of times they'll follow you off the boat, especially if you see a real big one. You don't want to hook it right by the boat because you lose so many of them in the cables. Okay. It's best if you can get them swimming around. It's hard not to throw a bait at them, yeah. but you kind of, if he looks like he might stay around and be interested for a little while, you might want to wait till at least you get 15, 20 feet back. Right, that's what you're here for now. You get a better, you get a better, uh, Chance of keeping them out the cable. Our right. trip, sir. Our Let's do it, baby. Yes, sir. We wanted to get a taste of everything while we were here. We got set up. Wild Bill, Captain uh, Billy. Captain Kevin had a charter, so we had to find a uh, hook up with his his partner. Yep. Captain Billy, and Captain Billy was as excited as we were. We were excited about our tunas, but. He was a little bit more excited about his tunas. Well, I figured we were going to go right where we went and catch those same awesome 80 to 60 pound tunas and, and have another spectacular day, try to get that marlin that we didn't get. And Billy's like, no, 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 guys, I got another plan. And he, and he sure did. You and know. something really unique to this area, Louisiana, the shrimp boats. And the tunas that follow the shrimp boats are amazing. I had no idea, was, I, had no, I had never heard about it. Uh, maybe scallop boats in Maryland, you catch some bluefins if you're brave enough to take your 60-footer in between your rigging. But uh, no, I had no idea what he was talking about, but wow, was I amazed. Mm -hmm. Absolutely amazed. We have that in Key West, but we don't have those yellowfins there. You know, we have the blackfins. You know, uh, something else was neat. That boat never stopped moving, whereas I'm used to fishing a boat that's still. So, mm -hmm. you know, we roll up. He tells me, I like, because I, I told him, I said, I want a big one. I said, you know, I want the a big, big one. He I said, know well, you get, are when I'm not looking. He said, get, I want the biggest one. He said, get the biggest mullet in the well. That, that, well, <laughs> you already caught like four. I think I caught one the first day. You want the biggest mullet we can find? Big one. We got him. He said, get the biggest <laughs> mullet in the well. You know. Oh, my God. Well, four biggest pound mullet, mullet in the well. I don't even know. You asked me, Gab, so I'm looking for a, a, a big tarpon mullet. Yeah. Two pounds, 12, 14 inches. I look in there, because they had also caught bait for us. Captain Billy was a man. He caught bait for us, and we didn't even look at him until we get out there. So I, was, I opened up the well for the first time, and there are mullet in there, five pounds. I couldn't get my hands around them, two of them, that big around the head. I was like, what? And I knew you wanted the biggest mullet. I said, I'll give it to him, nothing will eat that. So I gladly put that big thing on the hook for you. Yeah. And I grabbed a medium. Yeah. Like, there's no way he's ever gonna get a bite. And the first pass, we he brings that boat right up to the shrimp boat. Like, what? A, we're there. We're looking at the guys working. Y'all are good to let out when you're ready. Got it? Yep. Go ahead. Oh! oh! That is sick. That's a shark. Back there? Yeah. Oh, you just got hit. Look at it. You just got hit. He missed you? Yeah. That's a big old shark, buddy. Mr. Shark just got us. That could be why. Everybody. Oh, that was a tuna. That was a little black fin, I believe. Oh, yeah, yeah black, black fin. Come yeah. on. Got bait. Now he's on there. No, that's a, that's a tuna, baby. A rod you right. <laughs> Good man, the black fins we catch behind these are studs. There you go, sir. Thank you, buddy. Just hold off, eh? Uh, 
Got to have. I mean, put one on, let it swim away from the boat, yeah, see what happens. Buddy. Some, sometimes those fish are right up, right up behind the shrimp boat, and other times they, you catch them further than this away from the shrimp boat. It just, uh, just depends. And Billy, how often do they pull the, uh, pull the net up? It's not, not as often as I'd like. I'll tell you that much. Right. Uh, every three, four, five hours, something, okay. something around there. There she blows. All right. Nice That's black thing. Nice. That's like a real one. Marla would have had to work to catch that one. Heck yeah. Oh, man. It's a bad one, huh? That's one we got to specialize, you know, tight, tight fish with to get those big, big ones. No, these, uh, these can get quite thick behind these shrimp boats. It's not the not the 150 pound yellowfin we're looking for, but uh, He's it's, right a there, isn't he? it's a start. It's a start. Let's go. Catch Let's him. go. Thank you. Yeah, they good? Yellows or blacks? Roger. Be there in a second. I think Greve got me there, man. I threw the biggest mullet. I mean, the <laughs> mullet was that big. I couldn't get my hand around it. Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Yellowfin, only in a Yellowfin. Yeti, wildly stronger, keep ice longer. Simrad, brought to you by the new Simrad NSS Sport touchscreen display, and by Costa Sunglasses, and Tailwalker Charters. My fish screaming. <laughs> First fish, blackfin tuna. Which we have in the Keys. <laughs> uh, we came all this way, and we're, we're talking about 100, 100 plus pound tunas, and my first bite, I'm all excited, and it's a blackfin tuna. But it was a giant blackfin tuna. <laughs> it pulled drag on an 80. <laughs> they kind of wonder, we catch them with spinning rods, and here we are using 80s, and they fight just hard. So I, I got a little respect for that fish, but that wasn't what we came for. I'm hooked up, baby. My problem was, you know, you threw that bait out and you got bit instantaneously. Right. And then I was shark after shark, shark after you know what shark. I mean? And I'm like, you know, because Billy had me put the biggest bait in the well out. He's like, he's like, Steve, you want a big one, you need a big mullet. And, and uh, you were stubborn and, was, and at I, first. I stuck with it. But, you know, the funny thing is, is I was like, this is, this is BS, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, you threw that bait, that first fish you caught. I mean, you went, okay, throw here, okay. <laughs> And I'm, I kept throwing that big mullet out. And I'm like, Captain, how far do I let it back? He's like, oh, I let it back. They'll come get it. And I, you know, and I, I, like, know. I I'm know. like, Captain, do I reel it back? He's like, oh, no, you're good. Just don't worry about it. I'm like, See, I got to him before you. All right, show us what you got. It didn't take very long. That was quick. <laughs> I'm holding. Five pounder, but it's certainly a full grown. Should I just bring this one in? Or is there a uh, chance? Unless it's in the way, I'll leave it out. Come on, baby. Steve, make sure you hit him. Don't hurt the meat. I won't hurt the meat, babe. <laughs> I think Greed got me there, man. I threw the biggest mullet. I mean, the <laughs> mullet was that big. I couldn't get my hand around it. When you, when you threw that mullet, that thing hit the water. 120 pound, 123 pound yellowfin instantly when that mullet hit. So I fished for another hour with that big mullet. What do you think, Scott? You got a weight on him? I'm just waiting for you to see some color up. I see some color, buddy. All right. Is that, uh, how's that feel compared to them 50s, 60s we were catching? I never used this gear. It feels good, though. <laughs> Come out here behind a shrimp boat and catch a trophy fish like that. Close to shore. Yep. Just a quick, easy, short day if you hit it right. <laughs> yep. You know what's really nice? You catch a real big one here, you're only in 250 feet of water. You're yeah, not going to hurt you. Right. Like out there. Yeah. Walker, put that tongue away. <laughs> Tell me you can I see it. I see, I see some sweat beads forming. I see some me. sickles. That's a nice Walker fish, dude. Sweat. Walker, hey. don't sweat. Walker. No, I got splashed. Walker, twice <laughs> as big as those other fish. <laughs> hey, that splash. It was a little spritzer. Hey, twice as big, dude. Come on. Yeah, not kidding. Look at the sickles. Look over. He's right there. Oh, he's got sickles, honey. Oh. That's a beautiful. That's a good one. That's a good one right there, buddy. I got his head coming now. 
Oh, look at the sickles on that thing. That's awesome. I thought we fed That's some good beautiful. ones yesterday. I love it. I love it when the sickles start reaching back towards the tail. Oh. Is that a size thing or just a cool thing? Size. Size, yeah. Bigger than get. Not always. You'll catch some great bagels with the short fins, but yeah. How could this fish that, eat my mullet and not and I miss it with those sickles? If that sickles to his tail, it's like he's 165. 150 for sure, yeah. This is a 100 pound flora. You did a good job, Scott. You whooped his butt. <laughs> oh boy, Rod's doing all the work now. Pop the head up. Oh, that's a nice fish. You got it in the rod, bro. What a gap shot. Right. Woo. I think that counts as my fish. It does. What oh, fish? hold on. Don't do anything. You want to grab that other guy? Yes, I right do. Up there? Two, three. Yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome, my man. God. That's awesome, a good dude. one. Awesome fish, dude. Beautiful, Woo. beautiful, beautiful. Billy, what's he going to weigh? Ah, he's pushing 120. Yeah, I give him one, one, 113. 113. All right. That is an awesome fish. Hey, great gaff timing right there, You know there, what? Buddy. Actually, I give him 123. 123. I like I'll it. I'll revise my All right. All right. All right. Yeah, let's put him in the box and get the bigger one. Awesome fish. You got him, I'm gonna pull my gaff out. I got him. Man, that is sweet, guys. Do it again. Wanna be on our show? Well, check us out on Facebook and find out how you can win an opportunity to be on Into the Blue. Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Mercury, Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. And by King Sail Fish Mounts and Spear One. I live on an island. I live, eat, and drink fishing. I am looking into the water all day long. Without a good pair of sunglasses, I'm wasting my time. With Costa Del Mar's 5A lenses, I can see fish not only on the surface, but 10, 20 feet below the water. When I'm tournament sail fishing, I'm looking for any clue that'll put me on a sailfish. Not actually just the actual sail itself, but a ballyhoo, a one single ballyhoo jumping out of the water 100 yards away, a houndfish skipping, a flying fish getting nervous. I don't always see a whole fish, I just see a clue. And with these lenses, I can see everything around me for hundreds of yards. With the right lens technology, you can see these fish from any height. The higher, the better. But as long as you cancel the glare, you can see a, a sailfish swimming 10, 15 feet in the water without a problem from the deck of a skiff. More often than not, you're never going to see a whole fish. That's just the way it is. So you're always looking for visual clues. And having your eyes wide open all day long helps you find these clues. From a distance, a flash in the water is supple enough just to catch your attention to move the boat closer to that area and perhaps score on one more fish for the day. The visual clues all around you come to life. You never look in one spot, always scan left to right, forwards and behind. And then when something catches your eye in that steady pattern, zero in for a second and see if it happens a second time. And that's when you're gonna score. Seeing a fish or not seeing a fish is a difference between winning and losing. So I need the best pair of polarized sunglasses available. And I trust Costa Del Mar. They're built by hand and back for life. I can tell you're getting a little frustrated. We started off the first one. I didn't catch the yellow fin, but I threw my bait in water and instantly had that big black fin. Then the next shrimp boat we went to, I threw my bait in and actually caught the first big tuna. And you still have this giant five pound mullet. You've been carrying him, you've named him now. Keep putting him back on the water, make sure he's okay. And then was it the third or fourth shrimp boat? You're, I mean, how many presentations did you make with this mullet? And then all of a sudden, pay dirt. Oh, that's him. Sickles on somebody. Oh, oh. Whoa. that was on you. Oh, no. That was on you. Don't you miss him. You miss him. Or did you? No, oh. you didn't miss him. Swimming at his cap. Well, it was hard to keep that big mullet on because, you know, I watched you throw out a bait and get eaten immediately. And your bait was, I'd say, a quarter the size of mine. But 
Uh, I Billy, was Billy small told stuff. me, I said, Billy, what's the deal? He said, Steve, if you want a big fish, you need the biggest mullet in that well. You know, after enough bonita short bites on you and, and, and blackfin bites on you, I realize that he's right. The big mullet is to keep the smaller predators off of it. So once they come up and feed and bust on everything, or even if they try to get him on the tail, then here comes Big Boy, you know what I mean? Sickles flaring, you know, he's like, <laughs> and he has What an something incredible bite. What an incredible yeah. bite. He has something to eat. Look at that. Oh, his, his will go all the way back to his tail, man. That is beautiful. Beautiful. Woo-wee! Thank you, game. Captain. Awesome, dude. Good work, Good work, Good work dude. baby. Awesome, dude. Yep. Pull him up Steve, you like want to grab his tail, baby? Yeah, I'm going to try to hold him up and get a... Hold on, just I want you to get a picture with my phone. This, all gotcha. this is an awesome fish. That's a beautiful fish. 20 minutes later, he's sushi. <laughs> awesome fish, man. <laughs> Woo! Thank you, Captain. That's awesome, That's dude. never Good giving work. up, baby. Good, Good work. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. Nice job, guys. Look at that tail. Walker hit the loin! <laughs> I know it's hard. One, two, three. Into the Blue, presented by Yellowfin, is brought to you by Seaguar, always the best fishing line. Okuma Fishing Tackle, there's no stopping Okuma. Marine Formula Stable, for everyday optimal performance and protection. And by Ameritrail Boat Trailers and Under Armour. Wild and Fisheries is the lead trustee, you know, uh, for the natural resources in Louisiana, particularly the fisheries resources. Um, so we're the lead agency for the seafood testing. We sample coast to coast from Texas to Mississippi, every water, water body, every coastal water body, every species, shrimp, crab, oyster, fin fish, regardless of whether there was oil there or ever was oil there or not, um, we sample it uh, monthly. Um, all the species, all the major basins, again, from uh, border to border. And we've been doing it since May 9th of 2010. Louisiana seafood is the most tested seafood in the world. Uh, we've been touting that from the beginning. Like, even before there was an agreement, even before the, uh, before the oil even hit the state of Louisiana, or state waters, I should say, uh, we were out there testing, testing before they came to have a baseline of the seafood. We test, again, every species, and I mean, there's no doubt that uh, we test for hydrocarbons, we test for the dispersant, you know, all the, all the trigger signs for dispersants. Um, and we've not picked up a sample that is even remotely close to being any concern to human health. You know, the, the levels of concern that the FDA set, the levels of concern for hydrocarbons or the, or the key uh, elements in, um, in the dispersant it have not even been remotely close to being met from the beginning. In fact, the levels of, there's hydrocarbons in seafood in Louisiana, there's hydrocarbons in the water off Louisiana because of all the oil and gas activity. The levels that we see in the fish and animals and the fish and uh, invertebrates here are below what we consider normal background levels pre-spill. So we have no intention of quitting testing. Even once our three-year commitment with BP is over, we will continue to test into the future. In case there's another event, we'll have a very good solid um, baseline set of samples. The real challenge that it hit the state is the perception issue and, and our job is to get out there and, and demonstrate that it's safe. You know, we have a website, gulfsource.org, where every animal sampled, every bit of information of all the testing we've done from May 9th to current to present day is on there. There's also um, a three-year $13 million sampling program, and that's the monitoring that we do, just the health of the fish, not so much to eat, but are the fish healthy, are they reproducing, are they showing up, you know, we, we do that as well. Our promotion and marketing board, Louisiana Seafood Marketing Promotion Board, that's actually under the Wild and Fisheries, and, and they're getting ready to roll out the marketing campaign, which will address that perception issue, you know, because our brand or our mark or whatever you want to say was damaged, um, regardless of whether a, a fish or an animal was found to be tainted or not, it, by perception, it was damaged, and, and it's hard to get that perception back. It costs a lot of money to regain our brand, and, and that's what our Seafood Marketing Promotion Board will do over the next three years, is to regain our brand uh, and put Louisiana seafood back on top. Oh! oh! 
That is sick. <laughs> you know, that shrimp boat fishing, granted that, you know, we only probably are gonna show the three giant yellow fins that we caught there, but every time the bait hit the water, you were on with a shark, a black fin tuna, a bonita, it was instant. I mean, at one point, we had right a Wahoo five, strike. 15, 20 feet behind the, yeah. this 100-foot shrimp boat. You would but think. But then we said, hey, Billy, let's see you do it. Exactly. <laughs> well, that's the thing. You would think a fella that goes out there all the time, charter fishes all the time, sees this fish all the time. Man, when I said, Billy, you want to catch one? He was like, really? Take the wheel. <laughs> and he was on it, man. And he loved it. I got a huge bite on the, on the big mullet. Um, it was sick. I love putting you in that little harness, man. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we, we got, we had great action. Uh, caught that fish. You know, after that, you know, we both were just smiling. Get on them. So and it's just getting started for you. It's just getting started. It's, it's, it's not even Halloween it yet. It's just getting started. Well, I'm envious. All right, well, I am so envious. We'll make this an annual event. I'm coming back to Louisiana. Just write right, that well, down. I'll be waiting for you. <laughs> annual event.